Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I implemented dark mode in one of the projects that I'm working on on the site. And uh, I'm first going to show the app that I've been working on and how it looks in dark mode. So if I go to this tab, you can see this is one of the apps that I'm currently playing around with and working on. And uh, this is light theme and on the top here I do have a toggle. So if I press on this toggle, I do get the dark mode here. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to talk a little bit about how I managed to implement this. So if you go to the documentation on the material UI site, the MUI.com, as they have rebranded to, um, you can see they have a page for dark mode. And if you scroll down, uh, it explains how it, how it works, right? And uh, also there's even an example on how you could implement it with React Context. And that's actually the approach I have used in my app. So instead of uh, yeah showcasing this, I'm gonna just show the code that I have implemented and just talk a little bit about yeah what they have done here basically. So if you go to VS Code, you can see we have some code here. It's a little bit similar to what you saw before. Um, we have a React context here that's get created. We have a variable uh, called mode and then a toggle function. Okay. And uh, here is the provider, which is a React component. And here we have some use state where we can either have light or dark theme. And then we have a use memo here. So here we're using use memo and inside here we basically have an object. And here we have our mode, so the variable up here and then the toggle function which uh, checks is it dark, if it's, uh, or if, is it light? If it's light then go to dark, otherwise go to light. Okay, that's our toggle. Now the reason why we use memo here is because um, we want to yeah, increase the performance a little bit because we're going to be wrapping this thing around the whole app. So we want to make sure it does, doesn't do too many re-renders, right? So this color mode is indeed passed down in here to the value of this provider. So very important, this one doesn't re-render too much. Okay, now this huge theme object is, yeah, also memorized and it's kind of inside the component and the reason for that is because we want to be able to toggle to between uh, light and dark so we kind of need to make it part of the component and that's okay because we memorize it and uh, yeah as you can see on the, the palette we have the mode here and uh, that's how this theme changes around you can see I've done some changes to the theme here, but I haven't done any specific changes to the, uh, I haven't done any specific changes to dark mode theme actually. Okay, so that just works all out of the box, which is pretty cool that you don't have to, you know, do some specific configuration here to get dark mode working. All right, now if we go back to the app, uh, you can see that uh, we have an SVG here. You may not know, but this is an SVG. And uh, when I first put on dark mode, this was one of the challenges to get the text inside this uh, SVG, the right color. So it would actually stay black. If I change it around, it would stay black. Um, but I found a quick workaround. So if you go to the component, which is this one, you can see that I'm using Victory, by the way, for rendering out these charts. You can see that in the style property here, I just put it to current color, which is going to inherit that black color when it's light theme, and then the brighter color when it's dark theme. And that's actually a quick fix for making your SVG components compatible. Uh, making them compatible, yeah, uh, with dark mode. 
Okay, now there's another thing that I also want to talk about. So you can see all of these small boxes here are basically papers. So if you go to material, you can go here and we search for the paper component. It is basically this component uh, where we're using the outline variant. So when I toggle between light and dark mode, it takes care of changing this uh, border around it automatically, right? So if I were to comp implement something custom, for example, this one, like I could actually also use a paper here, but I decided to create my own uh, wrapper. So for that, you need to basically assign a color that is compatible to dark mode. So when you do the switch, it will also change the color of this border. So just to make that a little more clear, I can uh, target this element here. And you can see that here we have the border color, which is this RGBA value. When I do the toggle, it changes around, right? That happens all automatically. Now, if I were to use this color code in this component here, there is it won't it won't change automatically, right? So in order to get that changing automatically, you need to use some of the theme colors in here. And the one that matches the value we want is uh, basically this divider theme color, okay? So if we jump back to this date picker that you just saw, you can see in here, I'm actually just referencing that uh, color in my in my theme. So it automatically changes it around. Like if I were to put, let's say I put gray 200 here, that would mean this value, right? If I were to use that value, jump back to the app and then to a toggle, you can see it stays like this. And that's because this uh, color from the theme is not compatible with dark mode. It doesn't change. It just stays like this. And that's okay for some use cases, right? Uh, but for our use case where we just want kind of like a gray border, uh, we want that color that we assign here to be compatible. So I'm using, in this case, the divider uh, yeah, color here. Okay. All right. That's a few notes on how I implemented dark mode and just a few gotchas. The one with the SVG and the one with the theme colors. Uh, if you are if you are to do something completely custom, uh, where you can't rely on the theme colors or whatever, um, you can just uh, always. Uh, Grab this um, use color mode, this hook in the component where you need to do something custom, and then depending on the mode, you can apply the color you want. So, just to give an example of that, I think I do have. All right, so in this top navigation component, you can see that here I'm actually destructuring mode. So here I am doing a conditional where I'm checking what the mode is uh, to apply a, in this case, a image. And that's a good example of um, where you need to do something custom. And that's also why it's a very good idea to put this in a context and just wrap the whole app because figuring out what mode the app is currently in is kind of like a global thing. Like every component might need to know have this knowledge. It's kind of the same as storing the user somewhere in the global scope, right? All right. That's all, guys, I wanted to say about dark mode. Um, Hopefully a few tips you can use uh, if you are to implement dark mode in your app and if your app is using uh, material UI. Okay, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.